That's right here. You may be seated. Well, on behalf of both the Brattons and the Reeves, uh, we want to welcome you to the wedding ceremony of Robin and Luke. So glad you guys made it. I do this fast, so we should be okay with the rain, so no <laughs> worries. Um, but we're so glad you're with us. Um, a few quick words. The great philosopher. Chris Rock 
once said, <laughs> there are choices you get to make in life. Uh, you can be married and bored or single and lonely. Ain't no happiness nowhere. <laughs> well, I love Chris Rock as a comedian. I hope to present a different perspective to marriage uh, real briefly. And so I'm um, so glad again that you're with us. The three points I wanna make are quick and to the point. First thing, marriage is good. Uh, we've talked about this for the last, I guess, eight weeks. We've yeah. been going through premarital counseling. But uh, the concept of marriage goes back to the beginning of time itself. When the Bible, the very first thing that God says that is not good after a slew of things that are good is it's not good for man to be alone. And he presents Eve to Adam. But it's interesting that he doesn't send Adam looking around for Eve because she wasn't made yet. He would have ended up with something bad. Um, so word to you if you're single, it's okay. God's got this. Stay asleep. And fortunately, as you were asleep, uh, you've awoken to Robin. And here we are together. Um, God's brought you both together in his perfect timing because he thought you both would be better together, stronger together, and you could grow closer to him by being together. Uh, Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore a man will leave his father and mother and cleave with his wife. And Jesus echoed the same thing in the New Testament. And so marriage is good. The second, though, is, and we talked a lot about this, is marriage is hard. All right, so you guys have been single, for in, I'll just say in your 30s-ish, um, and that's a lot of time, being used <laughs> to one way of life. And so there'll be days where the love you have for one another might not feel as palpable or as present. There might be some days, worst case scenario, where you don't even really like each other that much. But I want to, to remind you that what you're doing today is a covenant. It's a covenantal uh, presentation, a covenantal ceremony. It's not contractual. Everything else in life we do is contractual. I supply you with this, you pay me for that. And if it didn't give you what you paid for, you can get a refund or ask for it back. Marriage is not that way. Malachi 2 says specifically, it's a covenant. So this is something that stands the test of time. And that's why words like till death do us part are used. It is covenantal. It's founded on a promise that you're making before God, before friends and family, before me, and it's for keeps. It's till the end, right? It is not a contractual thing. So it might be hard, but the pledge you're making is, is something so much bigger and so much better than a contract alone. It's covenantal. Third thing, marriage is beautiful. The most amazing thing about marriage is it symbolizes the most beautiful thing in the universe, and that's the gospel. Uh, Paul in Ephesians 5, when he ends his uh, kind of presentation of the duties of a husband and duties of a wife, which I'll get to briefly, he says, this is a profound mystery, but I speak of Christ and the church. So just specifically, males were designed to shine the spotlight on Christ's relationship to the church and the Lord God's relationship to Christ in a way that females cannot. And females were designed to shine the spotlight on the church's relationship to Christ and Christ's relationship to the Lord God in a way that males cannot. Who we are as male and female is ultimately not about us. It's about testifying to the story of Jesus. So your union, the reason God's brought you together in the grand scheme of, every, of, of, of everything, your whole life, is to bring reflection to the love that he has for us. Augustine, you've heard me say it a lot. He says, our, uh, God has made us for himself and our hearts are restless till they find rest in him. So we are wired for Jesus, wired for a relationship with God. And a marriage is a reflection of that. So when you represent the church and you represent Christ, a beautiful marriage shows that representation to the world. It's one of the most beautiful pictures of the gospel. And that's what we're doing here today. Luke, your job is to be a picture of Christ. In Ephesians 5, it says you are to love Robin as Christ loved the church, sacrificially, putting her before you every day of your life. And Robin, you're going to be a picture of the church. That's why that word submissive, that hateful word that we don't like. But when we remember, as we've said, that Christ was submissive to God the Father, completely equal, but different in function. And you guys are bringing attention to different parts of Christ's relationship with us. So in your life, 
preface, as you submit to one another and to the Lord, as you love Robin as Christ loved the church, as you submit to Luke, you are representing something so beautiful and so profound. So without further ado, let's begin. Why don't you face each other, hold each other's hands. I'm going to start uh, with you, Luke, and you're just going to repeat after me. All right. Will you, Luke, take Robin as your lawfully wedded wife? Will you live together with her after God's holy ordinance and the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love, honor, and cherish and forsake all others, keeping only to Robin as long as you both shall live? Answer, Answer I will. I will. <laughs> 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 <Please>. I will. <laughs> <laughs> your turn, Robin. Okay. <laughs> Will you, Robin, take Luke as your lawfully wedded husband? Will you live together with him after God's holy ordinance and the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love, honor, and cherish, forsaking all others, keeping only to Luke as long as you both shall live? I will. Right now for the vows. So now you repeat after me. Yeah. I, Luke. I, Luke. Promise to continually submit my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Promise me to continuously submit my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And the power, and by the power of His Spirit working in me. And by the power of His Spirit working in me. I promise to love you as Christ loved the church. I promise to love you as Christ loved the church. To serve you as Christ serves the church. To serve you as Christ serves the church. And to give myself for you. And to give myself for you. As Jesus gave Himself for me. As Jesus gave himself for me. And in the presence of God. And in the presence of God. I pledge you my love. I pledge you my love. Your turn, Robin. Okay. I, Robin. I, Robin. Promise to continually submit my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Promise to continuously submit my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And by the power of his spirit working in me. And by the power of the spirit working in me. I promise to submit to you. I promise to submit to you. As unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. And to give you the place of leadership in our home. And to give you the place of leadership in our home. And to seek God's grace. And to seek God's grace. To be the virtuous wife. To be the virtuous wife. That he's called me to be. That he's called me to be. And in the presence of God. And in the presence of God. I pledge you my love. I pledge you my love. Right, now for the rings. So rings, as many of you know, are circular. They're never ending. And they, they represent, represent that, that covenant, covenant I was talking uh, about earlier. It's a never-ending covenant that we make before God, before man, uh, with one another. So I'll let you take Robin's ring. So as you place this ring on Robin's finger, repeat after me. Wear this ring. Wear this ring. Robin. Robin. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. For with this ring. For with this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Robin, you take his ring and do the same thing. Okay. Wear this ring, Luke. Wear this ring, Luke. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. For with this ring. <laughs> For with this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. <laughs> and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for uh, how faithful you are. We thank you for uh, the fact that you love us so much. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And what Rob and Luke are doing today, they're, they're, they're shining a spotlight bright onto that fact that you love us. They're shining a spotlight bright on that fact that what they're doing represents something so much greater. Yes, they love one another. Yes, they're going to be together forever, but they're also joining a long list of people who are taking part in a ceremony, a covenant that points to that ultimate relationship that we get to have with you once and for all, that we're your people, God. So we thank you for that. We pray for them. We pray that you would bless their honeymoon, keep the rain away tonight, uh, bless their time in Denver, bless their relationship with one another. Help them to love you the most. And as you fill them with your spirit, help them to love each other to the best of their abilities. God, bless this marriage, we ask Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, as much as you've taken vows of love and faithfulness, you've given exchange rings by the power vested in me by the church of our Lord Jesus Christ in the state of Florida. I now pronounce you husband and wife. So you may kiss the bride. <laughs> So 
Shadow Face, everyone. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Luke. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 